watching Baird West Yard and welcome to the December 2018 layout update. I'm going to start this month's layout update off slightly differently today. So the soldering iron and hot glue gun that you can see there, you'll have probably noticed that they've been out for a considerable number of months now and the truth is I don't have anywhere to put them as where this is supposed to be a bedroom I lack space as you can tell with the model railway going all the way around the bedroom so and it got to the point where when I moved back in my computer tower and that had to go on my chest of drawers and any modeling equipment that I had um, filled up those drawers to the point where there's stuff on top of it like such as books some modeling stuff such as cardboard um, and also the chipboard that's going to be used for the DCC controller stand are actually behind it and what makes it sound quite bad as well is that in the bottom drawer is actually modeling equipment like so which as a chest of drawers shouldn't really be used for that so the beginning of this video is going to be about um, how I've adapted my bedroom to cope with the model railway considering the size that it is and the sidings come out to down there so let's see what I'm going to go and do about it I took a trip down to my local Argos this morning and I got this rather nice oak veneered office desk this will replace the existing uh, plastic unit that I've got uh, the drawers are slightly larger in this unit, however, um, all of the stuff will fit into the drawers over there. And on the left, you've got the open shelving. That will be used for any equipment and power tools, such as the soldering iron and hot glue gun. So they'll be used to store them. And I'll also use them to store any models when they're not on the layout or in boxes and that rather than having locomotives lying about like so but the reason I haven't installed it just yet is because the size that it is um, would actually foul the door if I had some if I was to install it straight away so I'm gonna go trim that down and redrill any holes that need redrilling so hopefully uh, that will produce a nice nice fit. Um, the length of it is 120 centimeters or uh, 1,200 mil. So I'm gonna have to take that down by approximately um, 150 mil to be able to, for it to fit. Or I might even get away with just taking 100 mil off it, but we'll see. Anyway, I'll be back when that's done. So I'm back, it's the 13th of December and I've got the day off work so I thought I'd give a little um, vid update on it. So yeah, I didn't actually have to do anything with it so I didn't have to cut it down. I just gave a little test fit to make sure it was, to see how much needed taken off and nothing at all really. I just moved that six inches up and it doesn't foul the door, only just though. Um, but you can already see how much of a difference it makes to the room. Um, so on the top of the chest of drawers here, I've just got the second roll of cork that I bought um, so that I can uh, begin to cork the yard and the layout. Um, so I've got that um, all set up there and I'll have a little camphor top which is just resting on the top of it on there with some locomotive or piece of stock. I've got a nice, uh, mod nice area for modelling so if I'm sitting down this is the kind of view I've got when I'm sat on, when I'm sat on the bed. So uh, when the light's on it's actually quite nice and I can see what I'm doing. Can't really see the full amount of light. There we go, that's the kind of light that I've got. Um, on the workbench at the moment I've got um, some sleepers that I was weathering up. So I was just testing um, the weathering on them to see whether, um, excuse the pun, to see whether I can get a um, nicely weathered track. Um, if any of you have seen Mike Buick's layout Oak Road um, that looks stunning so I'm trying to recreate a little bit of that 
It's all right, Magpie from each of different layouts to make your layout look good or as realistic as possible if that's what you're after, like me. And then I've got a 16 ton mineral wagon which um, kind of failed. I was attempting to weather it and I did okay, as you can see there, but um, I think I went a little bit too crazy with the varnish and I think I uh, over varnished it so it's all gone a grey colour and it's a little bit beyond repair so when um, I think I don't know what I'm going to do with that at the moment that's still on on my mind um, and I've got my computer computer tower uh, modeling directory from 2013 to see who does what and then down below I've got the soldering iron and hot glue gun on the top row I don't know if you can really see it um, and then on the middle row I've got um, the solder, the glue gun, the glue sticks for the refilling the glue gun and then on the bottom um, I've got the extension wire um, which powers the whole setup here and then in the drawers I've pretty much um, put anything mod plastic model in here so you can see that I've got a bit of a weathered girder in there along with uh, the kit of a Vulcan and a uh, both is 20mm anti-aircraft gun. Got that in there. Then in here, that's all the stationary type stuff. And then in here, just got all of the uh, forms and that for work. All the confidentials, really, and just anything electrical, like you saw a webcam in there. So if I ever go live, I'll be getting that out. But I highly doubt I will. But yeah, so that's that. Um, let's go and take a look at the layout. I'm going to start on the western end of the layout. Uh, not a lot's actually been going on here over the past two months, so I didn't do a November update. It's the only thing I've been up to is caulking. I've caulked the yard, um, but I haven't actually laid anything back down, as I'm not going for the track pinned effect. Um, like I had with the uh, Bailed West Yard Mark 1, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the track down and any sleepers that I had which have got holes in from the pins um, I'm going to cut them out and replace them Yeah. so the caulking itself um, I've actually got quite far with um, still a long way to go um, I've got all the way round to where the scenic boards meet the underbed boards um, and I've got it up to this point here so uh, the double slips done, all the points in the yard are done on the scenic area I've just got the main lines to do, which I've made a start on just down here. Um, I haven't done anything on it for the best part of a week, and I started that shortly after um, I did the scenes for the beginning of the video, which was November the 17th, I believe, which was when the computer tower was on my chest of drawers. Um, but yeah, um, about five weeks ago in November, um, before I did all that, um, I did pick up this Digitrax DCS51 controller. I got that from Bournemouth Model Centre for a good price of £200. Considering that they would be usually around 220 I thought that was um, a good deal. Yeah, um, I mentioned Bournemouth Model Centre. Um, they've actually, uh, they're closing down. And uh, as they haven't found a new owner, and the current owner is retiring, so they've got a sale going on. I picked up this EWS Class 66, it's a Backman model, um, I picked that up in their sale along with two other locomotives, um, of which I will reveal uh, slightly later on in the video. Um, this is a DCC sound model, um, it cost me £200 as opposed to £250, as, I got, as they had a 20% discount, so I thought well that was a bargain in itself, so couldn't go wrong, and it also gave me the chance to test out the DTC controller as well which works absolutely splendid and I would recommend so easy as well as I'm a beginner so if there's anyone else planning to go out into DCC then I would highly recommend it I was going to go down the uh, Hornby the Hornby Select Hornby Elite route but I thought well actually um, considering there's been a lot of negative press about it um, I thought well it put me off slightly so I went down the Digitracks route and I'm not going to look back. So yeah, um, 
let's go take a look at the other uh, locomotives that I've picked up. The second model that I picked up was the Hornby Class 60 number 60087 Click Sergeant in Colas Rail Livery. Um, this model's been quite popular amongst other modern image modellers and I've actually been looking at getting one for quite a while but I've never actually got round to it so uh, here it is on the layout um, or on Campford, little Campford Holt at least uh, for now um, until it goes DCC as I've got the DCC controller plugged into the main layout um, but yeah I'm quite pleased with this model I've already run it in um, when I had the layout DC um, it's quite nice, uh, it's got sprung doors um, let's demonstrate sprung doors, uh, all four are sprung that's quite nice, I will do a little review on it um, as well as the third model that I've got which I'll just go over to now so yeah, just give that a quick overview let's go over to the third model so now for the third and final model that I picked up, which is the one that I was actually most hyped about. Um, this is the infamous Colas 70, uh, 7805, was made by Backman. Um, I'd actually been after one of these since they were uh, they came out in mid-September. But um, because of the amount that got pre-ordered, um, Backman actually withdrew them from their website um, before the beginning of October and they've actually been quite scarce in especially on the Hatton's website and in many other model shops around um, I saw one in Paul um, that was about £180 um, so uh, a lot of money there um, and when I was in the model centre in Bournemouth um, I looked around for quite a while and then I saw it pretty much in the back of the shop um, on the shelf and I was pretty much stopped in my tracks thinking is this real because of how rare they'd become and I picked this up for about £149 um, so uh, I've run it in as well um, while the layout was DC um, I can still switch it back to DC and I probably will do uh, to get a few shots of the 60 and the 70 running um, but yeah this was the one that I was most excited about getting even though the EWS 66 has got sound. Um, I think that the Colas model, um, or the Colas 70 I mean, um, is an absolutely astounding model um, and I'm really happy that I've got it. Personally I don't see why it took so long for Backman to get it out and I compared it with the uh, 2012 model um, Class 70 that I've got um, which is the Freightliner Powerhaul liveried one 7003 um, the tooling is pretty much the same, the only difference being is that, air, is that air intake modification. So I really don't see what took Backman so long, um, in the sense that it took them a good year and a half, if not um, just over two years, to get this done. And to me, um, if you're on a job um, like that, eight hours a day, five days a week, I don't think it takes that long to do it. And I've done, my, and I've done a fair amount of CAD as well. Uh, when I was doing uh, product design A level, so, um, so yeah, don't want to rip into the manufacturers too much, uh, but after all, as much of a splendid model as it is, um, I think they took far too long in bringing it out for what tooling looks pretty much the same. But yeah, um, let's see them in action uh, pulling some freight is what they're supposed to do.